Welcome to my Euro 2024 predictions. We are so close to the tournament beginning. I am counting down the hours. I'm counting down the minutes to when I get on that plane to Germany myself to watch every single England game at the Euros. Honestly, I cannot wait. From daily vlogs to the activities out there, staying with a lot of my mates. Honestly, it's just going to be carnage. But first, I thought I'd express my prediction and see how much I get wrong in a few weeks' time. We are 13,000 subscribers away from 100,000 subscribers. So if you are new, please subscribe. Imagine if I hit this milestone in Germany with all my friends. Friends, they'd be incredible. We've got six groups to go through from group A to group F. So let's begin group A and the winners of the group. I'm going to go from first to fourth. It's going to be Germany. It's going to be the host nation. I think they're going to do it. Obviously, it's Cruz's last tournament. And overall, they've got a really exciting squad. A manager, Nagelsmann, and playing some really exciting football. They've got a big chance to show in front of their own fans that they mean business. But let me repeat again, Tony Cruz's last tournament for Germany. He's a legend for nation and club, and I hope he gets the send-off he deserves. But to win it, I hope he doesn't. Obviously, when I've got the England shirt on, I think, you know, I want to win it. Just talking about the build up to the tournament as well. I've just got a big feeling that this is going to be a tournament that we talk about for decades to come. I'm getting the feeling. I've seen the Euro 2024 intro. It's ah, oh, it's beautiful. They've got talents like Havertz, Wurtz, Musiala, and do not sleep on Pascal Gross. I've always known his qualities. He's been fantastic for Brighton, and I think Germany fans are starting to realise his qualities too. But we've known this for years now. His assists, his goals, his contributions overall has been fantastic. So can he replicate that and get the chance at Euro 2024? We'll find out. Talking of Euro 2024. I have a big question for you. What if you had the chance to win hospitality tickets to watch England versus Slovenia? Oh, and you thought that was it. Flights and accommodation for two nights in Germany are included for you and your friends. Well, if you want a chance of winning, then you've got to keep listening to find out how. Matchmasters and I have collaborated for you to win this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to watch a match at a major tournament. Matchmasters is a super fun, free-to-play, match-free puzzle game with so many different puzzles which you can play against your friends or anyone in the world. And to add to the competitive spice, it is the first match free game which you can play against real people. So now I want to go and play someone random. We're connecting to an opponent. There we go. I'm not doing too badly to be honest. 26. I've just activated. Look at that. We're up in the score now, aren't we? We've got a big move here. Extra move. Come on. Here we go. Oh, oh, it's getting a bit tense now. It's very tense. But I win. Of course I do. He did not get the points he needed to beat me. I win. That is the competitive nature I'm talking about. And I love winning. Let's just hope England do the job in Germany too. So to win Euro 2024 tickets, flights and accommodation for you and your friends, download the app in the description and earn 250 trophies. This is so easy and quick to do. I love the competitiveness, so you've got to download it and it's free. The winner will be chosen by a raffle of all those who qualify and will be shared by an in-app pop-up which leads to an email to claim the ultimate prize. I hope to see you at the Euros, but let's get back to the prediction. Now in second, it was a big toss up between Switzerland and Hungary and overall I have gone with Switzerland. It's a very experienced team and with Xhaka leading the lads, he's hoping to bring his mentality from Bayer Leverkusen, install it into the lads and hopefully they have a successful summer. And in third place, we are talking about Hungary and every time I mention the nation or hear about them, it always brings me flashbacks to the 4-0 defeat against them. At Wolves' stadium, the 4-0 defeat, it was a toxic, toxic toxic night. But look, I think they're a great team and they could finish second. They could be the underdog story in this competition. I believe they went on like an 11 game unbeaten streaks last game. They did just lose to Ireland. But these are just friendlies. They're warm up games. Okay, it will not boost the confidence whatsoever. But I'm going to put Hungary in third but it would not surprise me if they do finish second. In fourth place and it's not because of my English bias I have gone with Scotland. Their form hasn't been great and they have just come off a 3-0 win against Gibraltar but that's Gibraltar. They're nothing special. They have got to hope that McTominay stays fit. I think it's seven goals in the qualifiers or something stupid like that. He's been fantastic for the Tartan army and if I talk about the fans they're going to have one hell of an experience out there but overall I do think Scotland will finish rock bottom. Now we're moving on to group B and in first place we've gone with Spain. A lot are saying they will flop but for me I just don't think they will. Croatia have got some good experience, good players and really youthful players coming up too. Italy I'm just not too sure about them but we'll get to them soon. I think they're going to overcome these challenges and people's opinions are saying they'll flop and I think they'll top the group. I think they will. They've been on good form despite losing to Colombia at the London Stadium but we all know that Spain have got some really good youthful talent and I think they'll win the group. And as I've just been talking about, I've gone with Croatia in second place. It's a team you can never back against. If we talk about some of the players here, Guardiola is arguably in his prime. Modric is an absolutely unbelievable talent and their togetherness is just something so special. That has been the difference. Remember the 2018 World Cup when they beat England? Even at the World Cup, they've got a really special squad. You can never back against them and that is why I've got them to progress further, finish in second place and that means in third place, I've gone with Italy. This is my shout for the underperformers of the tournament. Now I'm just not convinced any 
anymore. Spalletti is a great manager, do not get me wrong. But as national team manager, have they got the squad which they had years ago? Obviously not. Cialini, Benucci, their mentality. That is what won them the Euros. Their mentality, Italy's mentality, and especially those two leading the team. That, in my opinion, is what won them the Euros. But the difference from that Euros and this Euros is that they haven't got them. I've just got that weird feeling that Italy will finish third. But as I follow Lazio, I do hope that Kenya has a great tournament. Now, in fourth place, I've gone with Albania. They're in the group of death, and I just don't think they're going to be above the likes of Croatia, Italy, and Spain. Let's be honest. Group C, and that involves England, and that is where I'm going to say England will top the group too. Shot Cara, the English bias. But in all seriousness, we're favourites for a reason here. I'm not saying that cocky because I know how it feels to lose. It's just been pure heartbreak, and I just feel like it's got to be our time. Just, just thinking to myself, surely it's got to be. But then at the same time, you know that it's going to be a bottle job moment, isn't there? Nothing hurt more than the Euro 2020 final. Honestly, it took me a good half a year to a year to fully recover from that. Harry Kane missing the second penalty. Honestly, my heart sunk when I saw that go over the crossbar and I was behind the goal. But I feel like these moments will make us even stronger. And this is where I feel like we'll top the group and hopefully win the tournament. And I'm just saying that a bit... Yeah, you know. One thing I will say is that this group is harder than what people think. We played Denmark in the semi-finals of the last Euro, so they're no mugs. Serbia, they've got some really good quality, but we'll get to them. But let me just read out our players. Bellingham, Foden, Saka, Kane, Grealish, Eze, Walker, Palmer, Mainu, Wharton. The only questions I have is what will be our back line? We're not too sure on that so far. And number two, we've got to balance that midfield correctly. We can't play Rice and Bellingham as a two CM CDMs. It's not career mode where we can play Bellingham centre mid with Rice and then put Foden in the middle and Gordon on the left. It's not career mode. You can't chuck these players in random positions here. Bellingham won the La Liga player of the season for playing central attacking mid. So he's got to play there. If I'm thinking on Southgate, it'll be Rice and then Gallagher or Mainu. It'll be one of them two. But all of these years of her, and I feel like this is the best chance England have got since obviously Euro 2020. It's not been long. Do not get me wrong. But if we compare squads from then to now, what the players individually have won at their clubs. In my mind, it's got to be our time, but we all know that you can never be certain as an England fan. Serbia, for me, will sneak that second place. They've got Milinkovic Savic, they've got Mitrovic, they've got Vlaovic, they've got Tadic, they've got so many good individual talent. And I think that will sneak them into that second place just above Denmark. And as I just mentioned, I think Denmark will finish third place and it's a massive tournament for Hoyland. He will be the difference whether or not they will finish second or third. But for me, I think they'll get third place. And if we move on to the fourth place, I think it's the easy option to put Slovenia there. But you never know, they can surprise us. All black in goal, they could get you on the counter and maybe get a goal. You can never be too sure, but on paper, I think I'm just going with the easy option. Moving on to Group D, and the winner of that group will be France. Deschamps is an absolute magician. He knows how to win from the World Cups in the past to the Euros in the past. We all know his quality. And like England, the squad is just stacked full of talent and experience. Do I need to say any more? It's absolutely nailed on that they will finish first. In second place, and I'm not just saying this because I love going to Netherlands and I love the Dutch fans, and just to keep them happy, I'm not just saying this, but I think they will finish second. A lot of people are underestimating them, and I think they can go far. Depay is always a threat, a very strong backline with Van Dijk captain in the side and going forward they have some really good quality. In third place I have gone with Austria. It is a shame that they've got two massive countries in the group France and Netherlands because in the last Euros didn't they finish second so it is just a shame that they've got competition like France and Netherlands to compete with. I just have that feeling inside of me. Do you know when you have that feeling? I have that feeling right now that Poland are just not going to do well. Not taking Matty Cash does not sit right with me. I think he had to go. The squad is ageing. It's getting a little bit too old for my liking. And, I, and like the last Euros, I don't think they're going to do well. Moving on to Group E and the winners for me will be Belgium. But I think they are very lucky that they don't have some major competition to threaten them for that first place. Because I don't think Belgium are all that. And that is very rare coming from the England fan where we haven't got a good record against them. Yes, they've got Trossard, Lukaku, De Bruyne, Tillemans. They've got the quality, do not get me wrong. But I've never been too impressed. It is very rich coming from the England fan here, but I do think they'll top the group. Second place, I've gone with Ukraine, and I genuinely think Mudrik will be the standout performer in that Ukraine team. I think he'll shine and really prove to everyone what a great player he is. I think he'll step up and be the main man and finish second place. Third place, I've gone with Slovakia. It was a real big 50-50 between them and Romania. It is literally a flip of a coin on who I think will finish third and fourth. Yeah, I, I'm just full of ball knowledge, aren't I? Which means in fourth place, I have gone with Romania and they have got some talented players in there. Haggy in midfield, Puskas up top. Great footballers, but can they do it on the real stage and get up to third, second? We'll find out, but I could be wrong. They could surprise everyone. And in some way, I really do hope I am wrong. I love seeing nations who you back are going to be finishing fourth, third to actually perform and finish second and be the shock of the tournament. I like seeing nations like that and I hope Romania are one of them teams. And last but not least, we've got Group F and for me, the winners will be Portugal. I really like their squad, a mix of youthful talent full of experience too. We will find out if Ronaldo is past it or has still got the quality to compete against these sides. Bruno Fernandes, Bernardo Silva, Polina a centre defensive mid. I think that's an absolute joke. Diaz at the back, Liao in attack and Portugal are winning the... 
League. Yeah, sorry, sorry. That is actually appalling. I better move away from that chant, but if you're Portuguese watching that, I've just got you a new chant. But you might want to translate that to Portuguese. In second place, I have gone with Turkey, and I think they will have a great tournament. They're going to be backed really well in Germany, and I think that's a massive factor, the 12th man. But the 12th man, the Turkey fans, they're absolutely crazy, and I think they're going to create one hell of an atmosphere. Czech Republic in third place. It's a really tough group, and I think they'll finish there. Their team is on the experienced side. Shick up top, but I just don't think it'll be enough, and I think they will finish third. And lastly, Georgia in rock bottom in fourth place, unfortunately. They've got Cavara as a winger, but this is not a one-man team game, is it? So for me, they're going to be finishing rock bottom. Thank you for watching my Euro 2024 predictions. Who will be the underdog story in this competition? And who will be that nation who will just flop in Germany? Remember to download Matchmasters. Link will be in the description. Earn 250 trophies, and you are in with a chance of winning Euro 2024 tickets, flights, and accommodation for you and your friends. It's as simple as that. I hope to see you in Germany, and make sure you enter the competition. Link in the description.